I pray that you are feeling great and revived during this time of consecration and seeking. And it's such an honor and a joy to be able to share today's devotion with you. And I truly thank our leaders as well as our pastors. So before we jump in, has this question ever crossed your mind? Like, okay, God, I know you're taking this house to a new season, but how can I be useful in this new season of great deliverance as well? So I truly believe that we're going to find the answers in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22. So I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, all right? All right, let's get started. And it says, run from anything that stimulates youthful lust, and instead pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who called on the Lord with pure hearts. Now, family, I want to share this story with you that happened to me years ago, all right? So my parents threw me this huge high school graduation party. I'm talking about 200 people deep, right? So we had friends, we had loved ones, we had family, we had the whole neighborhood basically from all over to celebrate this occasion. And I was so excited because it was good to see everyone, but also my mom and my dad, they went all out of this, you know, for this graduation party. And at one point I was like, is this party for me or is it for you? Like, what is it? <laughs> but the celebration was big because reason being, I was the first in my family to actually go to college at that time. So this was really, really big. And not only was I thankful for the monetary gifts and we bless him, you know, because college is another devotion on its own. Y'all know that. But out of all the gifts that I received, there was one in particular that stood out to me the most. And it was from my mentor. And she had given me a pocket-sized devotional uh, for encouragement. And in this devotion, it was stories, it was scriptures, and not only was it that, but also hidden in the book was a letter. And in that letter, she poured out this wisdom to me. She spoke and she said, Brittany, you are stepping into a new season. You are stepping into a new chapter in your life called college. And this is the time where you're going to have to make decisions on your own. And then you may not have me or you may not have your parents, you know, to always lean on, however, comma, if you come against a life challenge or even a decision for that matter, always lean on God's word and remember this letter. And further down as she writes, and I'm reading, she says, Brittany, do not forget who you are and whose you are in this new season. She said, because distractions and temptations, they're going to come, right? But don't get distracted. Don't entertain these things because God has a purpose for you in this new season. And then she writes again. Brittany, remember who you are and whose you are in this new season. Shine your light and be set apart. And so in this text family, Paul is writing to Timothy. And let's picture Timothy right now reading this letter from his spiritual dad, from his mentor. And through this letter, Paul is imparting his final words of wisdom and instruction on how to be useful in a new season, how to avoid distractions and how to avoid temptations. And so if you get a chance, I encourage you to read the book of Timothy and you'll see some of the instructions Paul gives. And so as I'm reading this verse, I'm like, wow, God, like much like Timothy, you have given us a letter as well during this consecration to tell us this, that in this new season of great deliverance, we must set ourselves apart. And so what does it mean to be set apart? It simply means this, to act and think differently, but it doesn't stop there, y'all. There's a different level of discipline when it comes to acting and thinking differently for a special purpose. And so as followers of Christ, we are chosen to live a life that is holy and acceptable, that glorifies God in all that we say and all that we do. So in this letter, what is God telling us today? First, this is what he's saying. We must be set apart from something, from something. And to be set apart from something simply means this, to run, okay? Run for us, run child, all right? Y'all need to run, run away from those things. All right, and how can we see what God wants to do in our next season if our vessel is full of unclean desires, huh? Huh, tell me, how you gonna see? So Paul writes, we have to flee from the youthful lust and anything that's just going to defile us. And so right now, I want to take a quick assessment, right? Are there things that you may have consumed that will hinder you from being useful in this new season, all right? 
Are there people or stubborn habits or things that you personally know that, hey, you know what? I should not be entertaining that right now, Britt. Uh-uh, like, no, I should not want this. No, just no, uh-uh. So, Britt, how do I get rid of these wrongful things? And I'm so glad you asked. And I'm a firm believer that what you put in, something has to come out, right? So as you're taking in more things of God and more of his word during this consecration, bad habits in the old man, it has to come out. The more that we pray, the more that we lay before him, the lustful desires have to burn out. And I don't know about you, y'all, but I don't wanna be the reason why God cannot use me in this new season. Uh-uh, I don't wanna be the reason. So secondly, God is telling us to be set apart for something. And as we read in verse 22, God wants us to run after righteous living. He wants us to pursue faithfulness and love and peace and enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. And in Galatians chapter five, verses 19 through 23, it lays out the same blueprint and tells us to put off the works of the flesh and to pursue the fruit of the spirit. And so today, let us ask God, as David did in Psalm 51 and 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, renew a loyal spirit within me. And I want us to just ask him daily, let the Holy Spirit search us and reveal anything in our hearts that does not please him, anything in our lives that does not please him. Let's be honest with ourselves and confess our sins to Jesus and turn away from those things. And by doing this, as 1 John 1 and 9 lays out for us, we open the way for God to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So as we allow God to cleanse our hearts, we become honorable vessels fit for the master's use. So as you seek God during this time, here's a, a reflection exercise that you can do and meditate on. You can take a sheet of paper, you can take a journal, I love journals, or even write in your phone. And on one side, I want you to write set apart from and on the other side, write set apart for and allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to you what are the things around you that stir up the wrong desires. Ask God to search and show you the areas that you need to make right, right? And repent and ask for forgiveness and cleansing. And as you recommit your yes, okay, as we recommit our yes and life to him, He's going to set us apart for his use. And so this is a great time, family, to go right into prayer. Father, we just thank you right now for this very moment. We thank you, God, for the letter that you have personally written to us on today, God. Lord, I want you to search our hearts, God. If there are wrongful desires that we have, God, if there are stubborn habits, oh Lord, if there is ungodly pleasures, if there are addictions, if there is residue from our past, God, I want you to purge it out of us, God. I am praying, God, for a clean heart. We are yearning for the clean heart, oh God. And I thank you for the clean heart, the purified heart, the heart that desires more of you and your will, oh God, the heart that desires to pursue and to serve your vision, oh God. And Lord, I search, I want you to search our mind, remove all unclean thoughts, negative thinking, depression, doubt, and fear, God. I want you to take hold of those things that have resonance in our mind, God. And I want you to evict those unclean things, God. And I thank you for renewing our mind, the mind that will be in you, oh Lord. And God, we divorce ourselves from distractions. We divorce ourselves from temptations. We divorce ourselves from every soul tie, from every link, from every addiction. We break it in the name of Jesus, God. Every shackle we break, every chain we break, oh God, that will try to hinder us and keep us bound from going forth in your will, oh God. And God, we thank you for the purification process, God. We thank you for the purification that's taking place even right now, oh God, that is setting us up for the new season, oh Lord. And God, we obey, we take heed to your word of instruction that you have poured out in this letter on today. God, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Family, I love you and God bless you.